I greet you all and thank you so much for choosing Church of Uganda Family TV. This is Flourishing Hub and Flourishing Hub is on every Monday like we are today. And we thank God who has taken us through uh, the previous week but also through this day. Yeah, up to now when we are here with another exciting uh, topic. So uh just to remind you if you're joining us for the first time that young and flourishing foundation is the reason we are here in other words flourishing hub is brought to you by young and flourishing foundation and young and flourishing foundation is built on four pillars at uh, which pillars are the center on which this program revolves the first pillar is money a young and flourishing uh, foundation wishes to see all the young people having the principles of money or knowing the principles of money and what are these principles of money management one is working and you earn you save and after saving you invest the second uh pillar is daring uh so uh with this it is very important to identify and exploit uh, those various business opportunities. So your eyes are opened up to those various uh, business opportunities, which would uh, after at one time become world-class businesses. So that humble beginning is okay. If you stay focused, it will be a world-class business. Now, the third pillar is mentorship because Trust me, to flourish, you need uh, an experienced person. You need someone who has done what you want to do, who has walked the journey you want to walk, to share with you, to guide you, to lead you. So you need a mentor. And uh, Young and Flourishing Foundation also emphasizes mentorship and the importance of mentorship. And then the last pillar is strategy. Yeah, you need to have a personal plan. You, you need to have a plan for your life. Hmm? So, if you do not have a plan, like we've already said, you'll always be in other people's plans. Now, today, we have another interesting topic that we are going to talk about. And uh, with us today to share uh, procedures of land acquisition in Uganda, especially you who is working hard to, you know, you've saved a lot of money or you've saved some money and your target is to acquire some piece of land somewhere in Uganda. So today we are discussing that with us is none other than the CEO of Young and Flourishing Foundation, but also his uh, the CEO of Ridgeline, uh, Ridgeline Uganda. Ridgeline Uganda is um, a company, but this person has an 15 years experience in real estate. Now, I know you're asking who this person is. This person is part of us. And join me as we welcome with us, Herbert Sabiti. Herbert. It has been a while without seeing you yeah, sure. on this lens. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I was waiting for my to take the trophy. <laughs> okay. So you, you know, when you talk about Arsenal, mm. I'm almost I may forget <laughs> what he's supposed to do this evening. But yeah. we are glad you've come to share with us this evening. Yeah, sure. I'm also glad to be here once again. And uh, if uh, um, people who are joining us for the first time, mm -hmm. it is important to know that he is the efforts behind Flourishing Hub. So each time you see us on Monday here, just know, even when he's not on, on your screens, he's behind there cooking mm -hmm. and whatever we see on air is out of his efforts. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for pushing flourishing hub it is my pleasure and you know it's my passion <laughs> uh, kind and of I, great uh, the and viewers. i always thank family tv for mm. giving us uh, this opportunity uh, uh, good evening uh, viewers uh, praise god and we thank god for for yet another episode of uh, flourishing hub and I'm glad that I have come here to share about real estate acquisition in Uganda, mm -hmm. which is very uh, a very good topic. I've been away for for a while, but mm -hmm. I've been in Kampala, <laughs> save for uh, recent when I, I was with your colleagues in in Chigali mm -hmm. uh, for Gafcon, yeah. and I realized that. Uh, uh, 
it's good to to give credit where it deserves. Mm. Really, Chigali is an organized city. Uh, how I wish that uh, Uganda can can copy that, uh, what <laughs> our young <younger> brother <laughs> is doing in Chigali. Uh, and that I, facility you were in surely mm. looks looks good. Uh, very beautiful. Mm. It's a very beautiful city, mm. and uh, and people there are very beautiful, and they are brothers and sisters. Sure. Uh, mm. We thank God for the development that is happening there mm. in in Chigali in Rwanda how is a uh, young and flourishing foundation flourishing yeah we are we are there we have kept on the pedal and uh, uh, many members are registering uh, we are getting into uh, different partnerships with different organizations those who have uh, the youth who have not yet joined us uh, you are mm -hmm. missing a lot uh, like he has mentioned we, are, we want to mentor you to become a world-class business leader. We want to mentor you to, be, uh, to excel in your career. And we, are, we want to mentor you to, uh, to transform your communities. And of course, you cannot transform your communities unless you transform your life and mm. your family. It begins at home. Sure. Yeah, it begins in Jerusalem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are looking at, uh, we are looking at procedures of land acquisition in Uganda. Mm -hmm. You know, when you talk about land, mm -hmm. especially today, when you talk about land in Uganda, mm -hmm. there are a lot of issues when mm -hmm. it comes to land. You realize that uh, people are even fearing to risk mm -hmm. to invest their money mm -hmm. in land. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to start from uh, your own experience and background of real estate, mm -hmm. what is real estate? <laughs> Real estate is, uh, is land, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. and also the immovable property on that land. So that's as simple as uh, that. It is land and, and the immovable property on that land. It could be a building, it could mm -hmm. be a fence. Or when we talk of immovable property, mm -hmm. I think in 2020, uh, China moved the property to, to, pave, to pave way, mm. it moved the entire building to pave way for a road construction. So some people might uh, reject that definition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Chinese can do anything. Mm. Uh, but uh, in a simple term, uh, real estate is uh, land and also the immovable property on that land. Okay. Yeah. And uh, looking at land and the immovable uh, property, on the land, uh, maybe, uh, like you said, a fence, a building, or anything mm -hmm. on land. Now, we look at uh, the phobia I talked about. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk about land acquisition, you talk, when you talk about people especially investing mm -hmm. in real estate, someone would really save their money to maybe buy a piece of land where they can construct the house mm. for residence but uh, people have a phobia mm. when it comes to investing mm. in this deal mm. uh, business in this business mm. so um, why do you think we as Ugandans have this phobia mm. uh, I think uh, you know real estate is capital intensive mm. uh, to get land like in now in Kampala or, or Wakiso mm you have to have uh, not less than uh, 25 million. Yeah. That is even far from from the city center. Mm. And uh, very many uh, young people, few uh, uh, can get that money. Mm -hmm. So you know saving a lot of money and you, you buy air, it's, uh, it's not good news. It's mm -hmm. not good news. I've seen people in my office, some, uh, someone fainted in my office mm -hmm. after he, has, he got to know that he bought air. So that's why there is phobia. But uh, the good news is that uh, mm -hmm. if you get these procedures that we are mm -hmm. going to discuss tonight, mm -hmm. uh, you will not get it wrong. Okay. Uh, you, can, uh, you can surely acquire property, uh, with uh, less hassle and uh, a genuine property. I know I tell people that uh, <coughs> sometimes I become a sadist mm -hmm. that uh, uh, you can decide to be ignorant because mm -hmm. you don't want to trust uh, the professionals to help mm -hmm. you in land acquisition and you burn your figure. So 
uh, don't be ignorant when you are trying to acquire a property. Always mm -hmm. consult professionals who are experienced in that uh, in that business. They will help you to acquire a genuine property. Okay. Even before we go to acquiring a genuine property, uh, we understand that uh, Uganda is one of those countries that have a number of land tenure systems. Mm. And just to, to, to briefly take us through these tenure systems, uh, because it is important someone to know before they even make up their minds to acquire a property, they should know the available tenure systems mm. so that they can choose from. Yeah, yeah, for sure, because mm. uh, uh, someone can... Uh, can can go to like to be and it, mm. they tell you that it is Kabaka's land mm -hmm. and it has only agreement mm. yeah. yet it is titled <laughs> land mm. and I have very many examples yeah, my client and my friend uh, bought land in, in uh, on Entebbe Road mm. then later you got to know that uh, someone had constructed <laughs> uh, a, a building a house on his land so when he approached the guy who had constructed, the guy told him that uh, uh, they told him it was Kawaka's land and they gave him a land agreement with the uh, LOC stamp, of course, uh, forged stamps of mm. LOCs. So he thought he had bought uh, uh, a Chibanja, mm. yet it was already titled land. So it is true uh, that uh, people need to understand uh, the land tenure system yes. in Uganda. Mm. Uh, and I think it's confusing uh, to find in a country you have four uh, mm. land tenure systems. Uh, so people will not understand which one is which exactly. when it comes to, uh, to when you are acquiring land. But uh, number one, we have uh, Myro land. Mm. Myro land, <coughs> remember uh, in history, is it history, the 1900 yeah. land agreement? Mm. Uh, uh, the British colonial uh, made an agreement with Uganda and they, they divided the land uh, in Uganda and also the, you remember the lost counties mm. in Bunyoro. Yes. Uh, Buyaga and Buganga is. Uh, 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 now you are a good student. <laughs> yes. Uh, so they made uh, an agreement, they divided the land into Myro and Crown land. Mm. So uh, Crown land belonged to the British and, uh, and Myro land was given to the, the Kawaka. And, but also Myro land was later divided into, uh, into private Myro. Mm. That, uh, that you know these days when you see men, uh, a lot of land titles, they, mm. they have private mail. Yes. But also, there is also part that was given to the Kabaka, to the king of, of Uganda. So does it mean that if I acquire a private mail, mm. then I've owned this land, uh, so it is mine forever? Yes. I don't need to report uh, anywhere? Yes, it is a private, uh, you, you don't need to, to pay... Uh, lease, mm. don't need what ground it's, rate, uh, yeah. And all that. Uh huh, it is yours okay. forever, mm. private mile. Then, of course, the Kabaka uh, has uh, a lot of land, mm. and uh, and of course, uh, our our Kabaka is, uh, is a good person that mm. he, he gave the land to the subjects. So, you see, uh, most of the land here in the, in the Kampara and the in Uganda uh, mm. belongs to, to the Kawaka, mm. so he gave it to his subjects, including us, and uh, so there is what we call Kawaka's land. Mm. Uh, Kawaka's land where the subjects, some, some of them, they are paying Busura, others are just staying there, others mm. have lease on the Kawaka, mm. the lease titles, so the another land tenure system I can come uh, from there is leasehold. Mm. Leasehold, you can have lease uh, on Kabaka's land and you have the lease title, mm. but also I can own uh, land, a private mile, then I give lease to you mm. for a certain period of time mm. and on conditions, terms and conditions. Okay. So, but also government has some part of the land that can, that can lease to, to private individuals. Mm. So that is lease. Lease, <coughs> sometimes it begins from 
49 years to 99 years mm -hmm. but before they first give you a test of five years yeah. uh, five years to see whether you are able to, to hold then after mm -hmm. five years they they renew it to 49 years or 99 years okay so that is this hold then the third one is um the third one is customary land mm. uh, customary land uh, back in our village i come from kavale and even up country like in in guru what you mm. find uh, you grew up staying somewhere and uh, by custom they they know this is the your property mm. uh, those boundaries are uh, those the uh, those plants that uh, that it demarcates, <laughs> that demarcates the mm. the land, mm. so that's customary land okay. that you traditionally you know that this land belongs to so and so. Mm. Yeah. Then the final one is freehold. Freehold also is a land tenure system in Uganda. It's like private mile. You own it uh, forever, but it is also found in the up country. Uh, up country. Uh, these days, the government is is is, uh, is uh, engaging the public to make sure that they they own titles on their land, yeah. so that the, those conflicts can be reduced. On, mm. on the land. I've actually seen uh, the minister uh, Navakoba mm. uh, issuing out land titles with the prime minister mm. to very many Ugandans out there mm. as one of the ways of curbing this and i think it is important that uh, our viewers understand this mm -hmm. very well so uh we are we are we are we are getting there and i mm -hmm. believe this information is really important especially on our subject today before we get into the procedures it mm -hmm. is important to know what are you acquiring mm -hmm. before you even get to the procedures so you mm -hmm. talked about freehold and you talked about leasehold mm -hmm. and you talked about private uh, mile. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so there is a scenario where someone bought church land mm -hmm. so this this land belongs to church mm -hmm. they buy they they bought this land from someone and then the church says um this land was sold illegally mm -hmm. but the church uh the church provides room for negotiation mm. that if you come and uh, we negotiate mm. and maybe you're, in, you're able to buy uh, to, to pay the soul, mm. then we can leave you stay here mm. so uh, is there any chance that i can eventually uh, get a freehold title on this land mm. or it is limited to only lease mm. yeah uh, freehold Mm. Uh, there are some areas where you you can't get freehold and uh, and by the way uh, when you when you are in a certain particular when you are in a certain area and you find a freehold title be careful it could be uh, uh, mm. because if there is a private mail then there should there cannot be a freehold mm. that's why I'm say I always tell people that please consult the professionals who know those things Mm -hmm. uh, there is a land in Mukono. Mukono, Mukono has brought problems in, <laughs> in, 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 in the real estate here in Uganda. There is a broke, I will not mention the broke number, but uh, mm. uh, you find in, moreover, in the Ministry of, of Lands, there are different types of titles on the same land. Mm. Now you go to do title search, you find the land is on, uh, is a, uh, is a let's say private mile again someone has a leasehold on that land oh. you wonder how, how it comes so people concerned in the ministry of land you need to uh, mm -hmm. to be uh, really to clean your 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 systems out mm -hmm. there because people are, are being uh, defrauded because of that uh, conflict okay yeah so there are some areas where you cannot have a freehold and a, and and private mail, mm. so you need to understand which kind of area I'm buying and what type of land in your system is mm. there. Now we have started. Mm. How do I know that in such an area? Mm. Uh, I can never have a, f a, a freehold. I can never have a private mail. Mm. There is what we call mapping. Mm. The the real estate consultants and surveyors they they know 
in this area it's Kabaka's land, in this area it's private mile. Uh, up country there could be customary or, or freehold. Also in Uganda there are some areas where there are freehold titles. So consult the professionals, that's okay. what I keep saying. <laughs> they are mapping, we, we, have, we, we know where which type of tenure system is located. Okay. So uh, it means there is no platform where I can go to, or there is no office where I can go to to get this information? Maybe in the lands. Okay. Yeah, in the District lands, land board, or yeah. I need to come to yeah, the you ministry? Can, you can go to, they call them zonal offices. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we have zonal offices in Wakiso, in every, in every district has a okay. zonal office. Okay. Yeah. Now, we get to the procedures, mm -hmm. which is our main point of discussion this evening, procedures of land acquisition mm -hmm. in Uganda. So, I've uh, gathered, I've saved my money painfully, mm -hmm. and I now want to acquire mm -hmm. this piece of land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for whichever reasons mm. i want to have it mm. <laughs> yeah uh, the first thing is uh, you need to open boundaries <clears throat> opening boundaries mm -hmm. that's where you get uh, a, 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 a land surveyor mm. a qualified land surveyor why am i saying qualified there are people who are, are tape holders and <laughs> go masquerading <laughs> and there are many by the way <laughs> they, they go masquerading as the as the land mm. surveyors mm. Uh, land surveyors are, are registered by institute of surveyors of uganda so mm. you need to you need to, to engage uh, those who are registered those are registered, they can send in their field surveyors, but they are responsible for that. So do they, uh, like lawyers or nurses, yes. or do they have a certificate yes, that they I can first ask Every for? year they get uh, practicing certificates. Okay. So uh, those who are watching me, uh, you need to ask a practicing certificate in case mm. you are going to engage a surveyor. If he doesn't have, then he, uh, you know that maybe he's a tip holder or he's just a field <laughs> surveyor, but he should give you... Uh, a practicing certificate. Okay. Why do we open boundaries? Number one is to confirm whether the land actually exists. Mm. Uh, you cannot just go there and they, they show you that this is the maxstone, this maxstone, this maxstone, mm. and so the land is a, 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 a does exist. You can see the land, but it does not exist. Mm. Uh, yes. Even when I see it. Yeah. Because uh, you can see yet it's, uh, the title is not in the for that place. Mm. So you need to open boundaries to confirm whether the land exists. You need to open boundaries to see whether the dimensions on the ground uh, correspond to the dimensions mm. on the title. Uh, because uh, the title, sometimes there could be uh, discrepancies in, in size. So you need mm. to confirm whether actually what is on the ground is the same as what is on on the land title. Okay. Then you also need to confirm whether the land is encroached on. Because sometimes you can buy land when the neighbors have encroached on a big percentage. Mm. There is a, an area where we, someone bought land, and it's an organization, mm. they bought land and they use the quicks, the land surveyor to open boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yet that land, uh, someone had no debut. Uh, uh, like uh, seven decimals on, on on that piece of land, so when um, went there to verify, we found that uh, the land had already been encroached on, and they have already paid. So you need to. Uh, so what happens in such a situation? Uh, you just discuss because now you discuss with the, uh, 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 is now this, is the, uh, is the, is this person called a squatter? No, it's not a, a squatter because he also has a title. Oh. But when he was going to build, he never opened boundaries or he was mm. uh, misled by by other quick surveyors. Okay. So uh, you discuss with him whether you are going to demolish the property uh, At or, a cost. or whether he's going to compensate you for that particular land. But you don't need to go into that. <coughs> mm. By the way, in the land sales agreement, we we normally say, uh, we normally put a clause. The lawyers normally put a clause that mm. there should be a peaceful enjoyment of the possession of the property. So you, when you are not at peace, 
you have not <laughs> bought land. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to go through these procedures so mm. that when you are in possessing the when you are possessing your land, mm. you are you are peacefully enjoying the possession. Okay. And uh, when we talk about peaceful enjoyment mm -hmm. of the land mm -hmm. let us uh, peacefully take a short commercial break <laughs> when we return we are going to continue with the procedures mm -hmm. for land acquisition in uganda please don't go anywhere Thank you so much, you who is still watching Church of Uganda Family TV. This is Flourishing Up. Edwin Austin Mukalas is my name. And today we are looking at the procedures of land acquisition here in Uganda. And uh, with us is Herbert Sabit, who is the CEO of Regline now. Um, he has he has this experience, a 15 years experience in real estate. So we know we are talking to the right person, especially when it comes to this topic. And before the break, we had actually talked about the very first procedure, which is very important, and that is opening the boundaries. So, uh, Herbert, mm. after opening the boundaries, mm. what do I do next? <clears throat> yeah, you know, there is uh, what we call... Uh, uh, valuation uh. Uh, you need to know in in that particular area uh, how how much the land is the value of the land mm. uh, because uh, uh, you see there are some uh, brokers who connive with the sellers mm. uh, and they tell you that uh, for you you want 15 million we are going to sell it at 25 the balance is ours very unprofessional so if you don't know the value of that land, you find you are paying much more than you are supposed to pay. Uh, again, you need to consult the valuers uh, to help you uh, get the value of that land. Do your market research if you are unable to, to consult the valuers. Uh, do your market research and find out the value of the of the land. Similar, similar similar properties around that area. Now, talking about valuation, mm. you know this is, you're gonna like, uh, you talked about the blockers. Mm. Uh, the blocker will look at uh, not what you have to pay or how this land uh, weighs, but how much they earn out of this particular property. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you realize they even cheat mm. the one selling Mm, that's true. Yeah, so uh, how do I, how do I, do I really still need to get a valuer to take me up this process? Yeah, you can, <coughs> you can hire uh, someone to take you all through this process, even opening boundaries and mm. that, yeah. There are people, there are farmers around Kampala, including Ridgeline, <coughs> that are able to, to take you through, uh, to take you through the land acquisition. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you really need to know the worth of mm. the property you are buying otherwise you find you are paying double <laughs> of the price <laughs> i know there some. are people who, who who can uh, who can survive on your ignorance <laughs> of the values <laughs> and they go and enjoy uh, they enjoy your sure. hard earned money sure yeah yet you are you can pay a uh, little consultants mm. uh, fees and uh, uh, talking about little consultants' fees, mm. uh, there is uh, a client who called us and uh, she uh, she wanted to purchase land in Mukono again again in Mukono. <laughs> and when we, to we told her about the boundary opening and the fees, uh, very little fees, she said, "Ah, that's too much. That's too much money." Mm. Later, after three years, she called us and she was crying that she bought air. I so yeah. imagine you are paying 40 million, but you cannot uh, even uh, pay 800,000 uh, to, to get uh, so that you can save your 40 mm. million. So sometimes uh, uh, you are 
yeah, you are arrogantly ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Can you be arrogantly <laughs> ignorant and use all your and hard mm. and money? Yeah, so uh, I have no apology for that. <laughs> uh, you need to really consult the the people who have been in the business, and mm. they can help you. Mm. Yes. So, uh, because when you talk about, but you've reminded me of someone who I know was told they were here in Kampala. They were, so someone gave them a deal. Mm. You know, uh, in such and such a place, and that is where the oil pipeline. It's going to pass, so mm -hmm. there is compensation. Mm -hmm. Now let us go and buy land now, so that when that time comes, mm -hmm. you have a piece of land, and then yeah, the, you'll be compensated. Mm -hmm. So he bought this piece of land, I think, at around thirty millions. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, as they were demarcating the oil pipeline land, mm -hmm. the land was left out. So as I was talking <laughs> to someone, yeah. someone told me he needs more ten years mm -hmm. for that land. Mm -hmm. To, to 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 you know to to, to for that uh, uh, to get that value get of it. 30 million mm. now when you talked about value indeed mm. <laughs> yeah you can it is very important mm. i now see and uh, and people also they they survive on a speculation that exactly. was that was exactly. speculation <laughs> That was speculation. It's like worker labor. Uh, uh, sports, <laughs> sports, sports betting. So, uh, the valuer has now told me the worth of mm. the land. Mm. Mm -hmm. but, well, by the way, when you, you hire a valuer, mm. he has to get a, a land survey and they go together at mm. open boundaries. Mm. And again, uh, this other procedure of doing a title search, they do it. Because you cannot value a property when you don't know uh, the titles, uh, the details of the title. Mm -hmm. Title search uh, in when you have a land title in the lands, there is a copy. There mm -hmm. is what we call white page. Mm -hmm. There is a similar copy of your land title in kept in the lands in the Ministry mm -hmm. of Lands. Uh, <coughs> so. I, Open, I mean, uh, carrying out title search, it means that the, the government has details of that land eh, in the mm -hmm. system. So you go there and, and see whether the land in the system is the same as the, the title someone has brought you. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, when the, I have a conflict mm -hmm. on your land, I can go and put a caveat. Mm -hmm. A caveat is that I also have interest in this land. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you put a caveat, there's nothing on that land can be done. Okay. Uh, like transferring or mortgaging that land, mm -hmm. you cannot. So there are uh, registered encumbrances on land. So when you do title search, you get to know the registered encumbrances mm -hmm. on, on, on that land. For example, could be uh, could be mortgaged by a financial institution, mm -hmm. or uh, a private person has uh, an interest on that land and he has uh, registered a caveat. Mm -hmm. So you need to all know all that. Okay. But also, there's what we call beyond uh, the title search. Mm -hmm. There are nine registered encumbrances that, that will also affect the peaceful enjoyment of your property. Mm -hmm. Nine registered encumbrances, for example. Uh, when you see land and it has administrators of the estate, mm. you know that there are stakeholders on that land. This person is just a steward. Mm. <laughs> He's just a manager. Mm. But um, uh, before recently, when uh, the Ministry of Lands passed a policy that uh, you have to uh, to bring the inventory of the of the stakeholders, uh, the names of the stakeholders and their consent. Mm -hmm. Before that, they used to, uh, if I'm an administrator, I can transfer the title to another person. Mm -hmm. So you transfer the title, you buy, and you buy it with the, the right person, but guys out there who <laughs> have not been paid, they will not <laughs> allow you to enjoy your property. Mm -hmm. So they are and registered encumbrances and how we go we get to know sometimes you you go there and you, you go with soap or sugar to mm. an elderly person and they, they tell you the history of that uh, of that land and you get information mm. sometimes sorry to say heresies we don't trust you <laughs> <laughs> because you are used <laughs> to defraud but there are many genuine heresies that mm. we use uh, so uh, you get um, 
information from uh, the elders and also mm -hmm. uh, local uh, council uh, representatives mm -hmm. to know the history of that area. So, mm -hmm. much as you do title search, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are some unregistered encumbrances. So, you mm -hmm. need to f do further due diligence mm -hmm. to know whether there are those unregistered encumbrances. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about unregistered un encumbrances, uh, there are some uh, people they can get your title uh, in your names mm. and he goes to NASA he produces the same title he goes to NASA he produces the same national ID eh, in mm. the names of Idrin <laughs> eh, produces the same national ID so when you do title search mm, mm. the title is in, the, in your name he brings the national ID, it is in your names, huh? but all that is forged. So guys have gone <laughs> far through that week. So uh, wow. you don't have to, there is what we call a forensic search. Mm -hmm. You need to do a forensic search. How do you do that? Because now I look at, uh, are there special, uh, special features that are on uh, a Ginwin land title that may not appear on this duplicate or fake? Uh, recently, they put those uh, QR code of mm -hmm. the new titles, but uh, all the titles, yeah, you can uh, you can actually visit uh, Ministry of Lands and you tell them that uh, I want I want to know the history of this land. So, you know, when you sign transfer fo forms mm -hmm. and you put uh, your your passport photos, uh, all this file is kept in the Ministry of Lands. So when you go there, they, you can request for that information and they give it to you and you check the photos, you check the words so that when you check the photo, you compare it with the person who is giving mm -hmm. that ID and it's whether the ID mm -hmm. is genuine. Is, is uh, that, are, are those the developments that the ministry is talking about where they are going now to produce a title with someone's national ID uh, number mm -hmm. and then all those credentials so <coughs> that uh, with that just a name, Mm. All your information can be tracked. Uh, yeah, that one will that one would help really okay. because uh, the Ministry of Land, Housing and uh, Urban Development mm. they know that uh, there are many fraud stars in the market, and as a matter of fact, uh, we uh, real estate practitioners uh, are facing a rough time <laughs> with these guys. I, they might even uh, shoot me from this studio. <laughs> you are revealing our secrets. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm protected. Yeah, yeah. protected <laughs> by the blood of Jesus. Yeah, oh, yeah sure, sure. <laughs> mm. So, <clears throat> so uh, title search, do beyond title search, do due diligence. Mm. Those are the procedures. Mm. But um, after after you have done all that and you are ready to uh, to transfer, I mean to to buy your land. Mm. When you pay like this. Freeze, those who are watching me, transfer your title, transfer your land title. Most people, they take it for granted and they keep the transfer forms and mm. land title without transferring. And you know, there are people who can... Uh, <coughs> you see, there is a challenge. You, someone can say, I lost my land title. Mm. They go to the registrar mm. and then they produce what we call special title. Mm. One, they put it in Uganda Gazette, and I, I can I can say that over ninety nine percent they have never read <laughs> that Uganda Gazette where they put uh, the information. Imagine they put it in Uganda Gazette for a certain period, mm. so people don't read it, and then after after that period, the, a certificate of title, a special title, is produced. Mm. So. If you have not transferred your title, someone can bypass you, mm. can bypass you and make a special title and use it the way he wants. Mm. So transfer your title as hard as possible. But also, there is where you 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 find. Uh, let's say the transfer forms have changed. Mm. Any time the transfer forms are, can change. Uh, what do you mean by changing? Uh, uh, the, the, details, the, okay. the details on the transfer forms okay. can change and the mm -hmm. ministry can, uh, can mm -hmm. upgrade and put in more features. And then the person, unfortunately, the person you bought to land from 
has already passed on and you never transferred the title so where are you <laughs> going to get <laughs> the signature uh, <laughs> those days we used to transfer using uh, driving permit using mm. passport but now of the deceased but, oh, uh, of, of, of the of the the both the purchase okay. and the the mm. the seller <clears throat> but now it is national id mm. imagine you kept it and you have your the driving permit and the person has passed on yet now they want national id where are you going to get so and uh, the family is not even don't keep to give it to uh, don't keep uh, the title <clears throat> that is not transferred not so good. are there any pros, uh, procedures that uh, i'm supposed to go through after uh, uh, as a process of transferring this title mm. af- after acquiring the land the transfer forms mm. what happens mm. I, do i just go to lands i submit them and i wait for my title or there is another process i'm supposed to go through yeah there is a process one f- uh, first of all uh, previously stamp duty that is the URA stamp mm. duty was supposed to uh, was one percent now it is 1.5 percent so imagine you never transferred your title and they have increased the stamp <laughs> duty and by the way the chief government valuers office mm. they value the land as it is on that day not as when it you was. bought it mm. So when you spend uh, four years without transferring the title, the value of the property is already increasing, so you are going to pay mm. uh, higher uh, stamp duty. Mm. So now the stamp duty is at 1.5%. Uh, 1. You pay uh, stamp duty and you take, it, you take your original title mm. plus the transfer forms, uh, uh, a copy of national ID of yours and the, the, the vendor and uh, also the passport photos you take it to minister of lands uh, mm. respective zonal offices where they will help you to transfer the title mm. so uh, that is it uh, uh, but also after transferring the title now it is in your names and it is safe don't think your land is safe hey. you can wake up and you find the like i've told you you wake up and you find the someone has built on your property <laughs> there are, by, by the way there are people who are so uh, 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 arrogant uh, recently there is a there is a person I know in uh, in Nichitezi mm. uh, they he found the press is co- co- off by UPDF and uh, and someone says I have the title my title is here this is my land uh, now what do you do <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the guy go and he uh. the land and he, I don't know how they go through it mm. and you find it is genuine in the Ministry of Land but they have taken your, your, your property. Mm. That's, that's unfortunate what is happening in Uganda. Uh, so keep monitoring your land. Mm. Keep monitoring your land. At least make it busy, put something. Mm. Make sure that you are possessing the land. Mm-hmm. So buying and having the land title is not enough. You need to keep monitoring and also put something mm-hmm. on the land. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because actually I realized that very many people have ignorantly been frauded mm-hmm. simply because of one, laxity, mm-hmm. but also because we've not opened up our minds mm-hmm. to to get such information when mm. it comes to land acquisition. Yeah. So for us, we think when you deal with this party, which party you're not even sure that they're going win, mm. that is all you need. Mm. And at the end of the day, you come back crying. Mm. You said when the, there is what we call population pressure. Mm. Because uh, the population is increasing and the land is fixed. Mm. Mm. We are not manufacturing <laughs> any land anymore. <laughs> they cannot manufacture the, uh, land. Mm. I, I, I see the, the Wazungu now, they are going to the moon. That's where they are getting the land titles. Mm. <laughs> so, but uh, here in Uganda, the population is increasing uh, day in and day out, but there is land pressure. That's why we have encroached on the wetland. That's why we have mm. encroached on forest reserves. That's why we have done what. But also, there is what we call greed. You find someone has over 100 hectares mm. and 
and the others don't have even a single spoon, <laughs> a single spoon of land. <laughs> so that income in cost and greed uh, also affects. Uh, so you you will find if you have not secured your land, mm. someone will come and take it, and then there, there is a there is someone there is our client. He, he, she found that someone had already uh, built on her land and that guy said I can pay you any amount you want because I wanted this this uh, particular <laughs> land <laughs> someone goes to the property and he builds his uh, to the land and he builds his own uh, his pro, uh, he puts a residential mm. and when you appear they say okay let's negotiate and I pay you because I wanted this land. <laughs> you can imagine. So um, that's what is happening in Uganda, <laughs> and especially in Uganda, in Kampala and Uganda. Sure. Mm. Um, I, I know the government has a big chunks of land that lay idle out there. Mm. Is there any possibility that someone can acquire government land? Yeah, through this hold. Oh. Like I like I mentioned, uh, like I mentioned the uh, in the land tenure system, mm. you can apply have uh, a leasehold uh, 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 land title. So is it the government that chooses uh, what they can offer or you, you can even dictate on how big you want mm -hmm. this no, space to be? It's like, uh, it's like saying uh, I have uh, let's say the vehicles mm. I want to lease a vehicle and you dictate that uh, I need this particular vehicle I need this <laughs> particular vehicle no, but they are my, it's my vehicle. So you just go you, whatever for you I'm need. just leasing it to you for a particular for, for a certain period of time okay. so you cannot dictate unless you have added in money you have paid me and we agree on on mm -hmm. the terms and conditions okay yeah so how about how do you close up all this discussion uh, uh, about land acquisition it's already time <laughs> <laughs> I thought we are still just in, uh, when it comes to real estate uh, mm. it's like also when it comes to talking to the youth mm. um, uh, I'm always uh, passionate about real estate because uh, I've been in real estate for long. Um, you know, land uh, is a factor of production. Mm. Here, where we are, where this studio of Church of Uganda Family TV, it's real estate. Mm. Where your child goes to school is real estate. Mm. Uh, the food you eat is uh, uh, planted on real estate. So mm -hmm. everything, everything is real estate. So there are many people who these days are, 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 are claiming that uh, uh, real estate is overrated. No, it's mm. not overrated. It is real. Uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot compare it with any other investment, whether treasury bills or treasury bonds. Real estate remains the best investment option mm. uh, because, uh, for example, land keeps on uh, increasing value. That's number one. Number two you are safe if you have gone through the procedures that we have talked about and number three you are comfortable you are you have that security that you you own land mm -hmm. and of course in a few years uh, what has happened in Nairobi where you cannot own land unless you pass by 90 kilometers from uh, from Nairobi it is also coming to Kampala mm -hmm you find that uh, you will be staying past Masaka mm -hmm. and you are working here in Kampala. So <coughs> the land, <laughs> land is always cheap today. I think mm -hmm. that's my closing remark that wow. land is always cheap today. So if you can uh, have uh, little money and you acquire property mm -hmm. and they should never tell you they are, this place is very far mm -hmm. because people are staying in Nigeria those days they used to say Nigeria is very far. Mm. Those people are staying in Nigeria. They used to say uh, Nigeria is, is very, very far. far. Now people have gone uh, towards Ziroge, mm. and people were, are saying it is very far. It is never far because uh, like you, you, you younger people who who, who are still uh, coming up, uh, you need to to go a bit further mm. and keep your land there, keep your money there. You mm. never. You'll never get it wrong. Wow. Herbert, mm. we want to appreciate you so much, especially for keeping the pedal with mm. young and flourishing network. Mm. I thank you so much. And I believe your services have inspired very many people out there. But um, 
these very services are highly appreciated in this country. Thank you so much, and God bless you for that. And I believe that uh, together we shall transform Africa through raising a crop of purpose-driven generation. Now. Uh, before we go, in a minute, uh, do you have, uh, not, not do you have, I know you have it, just a message to an African youth out there. <laughs> <laughs> to an African youth, uh, yes. <laughs> I still insist that uh, don't lose hope. The future is now. Mm -hmm. They should not tell you that uh, you will wait for the future. The future is now. You can uh, acquire actual real estate. You, you, you can get uh, five people or, or ten people, you mobilize resources and acquire land. So don't wait for future, because when you wait for tomorrow, you find the land is already, is already uh, the value is already high. So uh, uh, value the, uh, the partnership, value the network, and together we shall transform our lives and transform Africa. So don't lose hope and the future is now don't wait for the future yet the future is the present wow mm -hmm. so the big deal is transforming africa and the transformation starts with us yeah, me sure. and you mm -hmm. thank you so much for watching yeah flourishing up this evening so it's been a pleasure having you watching and just in case you missed out please go to our YouTube channel and you'll find all these episodes of Young and Flourishing Hub. Thank you so much. God bless you. I remain Edwin Austin Mukalas. Good night.